This is not your typical story about crime, corruption, power and money. This goes way deeper. The man we are going to cover in this video is involved in so many hits that news reporters rightfully have said, this man is a person who gets rid of his enemies without hesitation. And to make matters even more intriguing, he's running a criminal organisation while being friends with high-ranking politicians. This gives him the power and freedom to do as he pleased. But no one could have ever guessed what kind of jobs he would be fulfilling for the government of one of the most restricted countries in the world. This is the story of Naji Sharifi Zindashti. If you have previously watched the video about the Noor One, his name will ring a bell. His personal story was so interesting and mind-boggling that I had to cover it in a separate video. So let's get into it. Naji Sharifi Zindashti was born in the late 1970s and hails from Urmia in western Iran. He was a member of a highly respected family. Little is known about his upbringing, but it is evident that Naji found himself in trouble from a young age. In the early 2000s, Naji was arrested for drug smuggling by Iranian police. Naji and his accomplice were sentenced to life in prison and were placed in the Evin prison. He managed to escape the prison by killing a guard with his accomplice. After his escape, he immediately fled the country and headed to Istanbul in Turkey. In Istanbul, he established relationships with important political figures, giving him power and notoriety. Driven to expand his drug smuggling business, Naji set up operations once more, starting where he left off in Iran. In 2007, he was arrested again for the possession of 75 kilograms of heroin. As part of a plea deal, Naji agreed to testify against fellow criminals that were part of a much larger case. After telling the police everything, as well as paying them handsomely, he was let off the hook. Testifying against his fellow criminals obviously gave Naji the image of a snitch. He did not really care and remained focused on smuggling heroin and gaining power. His image would be something that would haunt him once again in 2014 though. In April 2014, Naji was involved in the Nor One shipment, a shipment that would trigger a series of unimaginable and far-reaching repercussions. On the 28th of April 2014, a vessel named Nor One embarked on a journey from Dubai to Greece. In the Gulf of Oman, it was joined by a fishing trawler. Over several hours, men transferred packages from the trawler to the Nor One. The contents of those packages? A staggering 2,000 kilograms of pure heroin. This shipment was the culmination of years of meticulous planning and was finally underway. The heroin was the property of a group headed by Urfi C. Naji was one of the key players. Others involved were Orhan Yu from Turkey, Ali Agun from Amsterdam, Greek mogul Evangelos Marinakis, and Metin Y from Rotterdam. Evangelos' share is unknown. Ali and Metin each had a 300 kilo stake in the shipment. Naji had a larger undisclosed share with the remainder belonging to Urfi and Orhan. Everything was very well prepared in advance, and this shipment would make all men loads of money. But then an unforeseen event occurred. As the shipment was approaching its destination in Greece's port in early June, the shipment got tipped off and nearly every single kilo was seized. This raised a lot of questions. Why would someone sabotage the shipment? Did this person stand to gain more from its failure? And more importantly, who tipped off the shipment? Suspicions arose. They were too well prepared for it to be discovered this easy. The men involved were not all friends with each other and given Naji's reputation, fingers quickly pointed towards him. He must have been the one that tipped away the shipment. An email in a police report showed that they also suspected Naji of tipping away the shipment. Well, we all know that these kinds of situations where people start pointing fingers towards each other are a recipe for disaster. Absolutely furious, Orhan targeted Naji, hiring two hitmen to eliminate him while he was driving his white Porsche Cayenne. The plan was simple, pull up next to the car, open fire and escape. However, in September 2014, when the hitmen executed the plan, they were unaware that Naji wasn't in the car that day. It was his daughter and nephew. Over the next years, the feud escalated, with Naji seeking revenge for his daughter and nephew. The two hitmen who botched the job initially fled to the Netherlands and Belgium. However, upon their return to Turkey on December 22nd, 2014, they met their end and were both removed off the playing field. Ironically, not far from where they had attacked Naji's family. Naji was not entirely sure who was behind the attack, but he knew that he would do anything to get the suspects and everyone that was in his way. It remained quiet for six months, only for the feud to resume in an unexpected location, Dubai. In early May 2016, Naji still sought vengeance for his daughter. He suspected Satin K, also involved in the seized Nor One shipment. 
of having a hand in the attack on his family as well. Naji indirectly hired two hitmen, Orosman Jr. Garcia Arevalo and Harpreet Singh Maju, both Vancouver residents and alleged members of a notorious gang called Brothers Keepers to do the job for him. On May 4th, they arrived in Dubai, armed and ready. Satin K, sitting in his car, in one of Dubai's most opulent neighborhoods, was their target. The hitmen pulled up next to him, fired their silenced weapons, and sped off. Satin stood no chance. They immediately headed to the airport and were long gone before Dubai police could identify them. This audacious act was unprecedented in Dubai, a city known for its high-tech surveillance and severe penalties for crime. Days later, Dubai authorities informed their Canadian counterparts that the hitmen had flown to British Columbia. A week later, a farmer in British Columbia discovered Orosman's body in his blueberry patch, riddled with bullets. Harpreet's charred remains were found in a burnt-out car in Agassiz. The exact reasons for these incidents remain unclear as the suspects were never apprehended. Sources suggest that after the successful hit, Orosman and Harpreet became arrogant presenting themselves as international top hitmen and demanded a promotion within their organization. Their behavior likely led to their downfall. In addition, word is that Naji had ordered the successful hit on the man in Panama who recruited the two shooters. Naji did not want to leave any open ends, potentially leading to his doorstep. His quest for revenge was not over though. His primary target, Orhan, was in jail and thus harder to reach. Orhan's brother, however, Ilhan, was free. Naji had him taken out by sending two hitmen to Baghdad Avenue in Istanbul, where Ilhan was at. Naji was eventually arrested in March 2018 by Turkish police after Greece issued an international arrest warrant for him. Turkey also wanted him for his alleged involvement in at least 10 hits, but once again, he wasn't in jail for long. Due to his extensive power, money, and connections, he was out before he could even get settled in his cell. Thanks to one of his powerful friends called Burhan Kusu, a Turkish court tried to revert the decision, but it was already too late. The involved Turkish politician, Burhan Kuzu, said that releasing him was good for Turkey's relationship with Iran. Nevertheless, this action set off a scandal in Turkey and caused quite a lot of turmoil. Burhan was later put on trial for his role in this case. He always denied being friends with Naji, while there were pictures of them dining together. Despite living like a king in Istanbul with his Lamborghinis, Rolls Royces, and villas, he interestingly enough chose to move back to Iran after his release from prison. Remember, Iran was the country he escaped from by brutal force and was still sentenced to life in prison. Why would he go back to that? Well, here's where it gets fascinating. Over the years, Naji had gotten a lot of power in Iran as well. For unknown reasons, he became an important person for the Iranian government. According to a Turkish news agency, the Iranian intelligence ministry had been using Naji's gang to do hits on or abduct Iranian dissidents in Turkey. How crazy is that? In the years after his release, multiple shocking cases came to light. In October 2020, Habib Shab traveled from his home in Sweden to Turkey. Habib Shab was an Iranian dissident who was accused to be involved in a 2018 attack on a military parade that took dozens of people's lives. The Iranian government still wanted to prosecute him, and here is where Naji came into play. They allegedly recruited Naji to set up the operation to get Habib back to Iran. Naji set up a honey trap. He recruited a woman, allegedly Habib's ex, who asked to see him and promised to pay back debts she owed him. In good faith, Habib traveled from Sweden to Turkey. When he arrived in Istanbul, he went on to meet the woman without seemingly having a clue what was about to happen. The journey to the meeting point was all caught on tape. What was not caught on tape is how Habib was drugged and tied down with wraps that accomplices had bought hours prior. He was lured. Habib was dragged into a car and moved to a different area. Then he was allegedly brought across the border of Turkey back into Iran in a white van. As news broke, his friends and family were all extremely concerned. None of us would have accepted him going, a friend of Habib said. Two days after he was kidnapped, he publicly admitted to the attack. On the 6th of May, 2023, Habib received capital punishment. On the 14th of December, 2020, Turkey arrested 11 people involved in the abduction and smuggling to Iran of Habib Shab. This really got the ball rolling. Over the course of a year, Naji got linked to hit after hit and abduction after abduction. Listen up. Naji and his organization are linked to all the following. The hit on Mohammed Mutayeb Salihi and Said Karimian. In Istanbul, 
on May 30th, 2017. In October 2018, Danish and Swiss officials uncovered an Iranian agent who had the intention to pull off a hit on an Iranian activist. Also in 2018, Albania expelled an Iranian ambassador who it claimed were involved in efforts to target opposition figures in the country. In January 2019, Dutch Foreign Minister Stef Bloch revealed that the government's secret service had very strong indications that Iran was involved in the assassination of two Dutch nationals of Iranian origin in Almir in 2015 and The Hague in 2017. And if you are a frequent watcher of my videos, this might ring a bell. I really hope it does. At least one of these hits, the one of Ali Motamed, was given by Naji to none other than Dutch criminal Nelfal F, who in turn recruited hitman Randall D. I have covered this in two other videos, which I will link. It is absolutely mind-blowing to see how this is all tied together. On the 14th of November 2019, Masoud Mulvi, founder of a telegram group called The Black Box, which published information about Iranian intelligence, was removed from the playing field in Istanbul. According to Turkish security officials, the gunman was a gardener of Naji's villa in Istanbul. As of right now, August 2023, Naji is living a free life in Iran, working openly with the Iranian government while simultaneously running his drug business. News outlet Iran International revealed that Naji's criminal organization actually has a significant share in the narcotics trade thanks to the support of the government, the ability to use their transit routes and their militia. Naji's organization controls more than 25% of the total supply into Iran, and funnily enough, the narcotics that are confiscated in the country belong to rivals of his. It seems as if he is now truly untouchable and can live a free life in luxury without paying for the chaos he has caused worldwide, an ending I have never seen before. I hope you have enjoyed this insane story. If you did, please feel free to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next one.